Hi and welcome to this on maths prediction for the Edexcel GCSE Maths Paper 2 November 2020 Foundation Tier. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to this Paper 2 prediction from onmaths.com. If you haven't um, done the Paper 1, then you won't know that you can go and this link here and it will take you straight through to onmass.com where you can try this paper out completely for free and you can even sign up for free it will save your scores and all that stuff um, you can do that before you even watch this video or what some people do is they like just to watch the video understand how to do the questions and then test themselves afterwards so what is the prediction well prediction basically is our estimation of what comes up every single time with this exam board what hasn't come up in ages and is long overdue to come up and it's a basically it's basically a guess and it's an educated guess but it is a guess and that's why I say in every video don't just do this and rely on it hundred percent there will be a lot of topics that come up in this paper but there also will be new topics that don't come up um, so make sure you do all your revision uh, whether that's with onmaths.com or mathseffect.co.uk or a different website or a different revision guide or whatever it is, make sure you do the work first. Otherwise, let's get started. So we're asked to shade in three sixths of this shape. So if I cut this shape into sixths going downwards, we're asked to shade in three of them. So one, two, Three. Now some of you might realise that three sixths is the same as a half, so we're shading half of it. And looking at that, we've shaded in half of it. Some of you might look at this and change that so that it's six over twelve, and there's twelve squares in total, and so we're shading six of them. However you do it, it's up to you, as long as you shade in six of the twelve squares. Okay, in this question we're asked to do 2 cubed, and whenever you cube a number, you times it by itself 3 times, so that'll be 2 times 2 times 2. So whatever the power is, which is this number up here, uh, you times the base, which is the big number, by itself that many times. Now some people still think the answer is 6 to this, so let's just work it through. So 2 times 2 is 4, so it becomes 4 times 2 and 4 times 2 is 8, so the answer is 8. OK, so when simplifying, it's really important to understand what like terms are. This is an x term, and this is also an x term. This is a y term, and this is a y term. So we're going to add the x terms first, so 13x plus 7x is 20x. And then we're going to add the y terms, so 3y plus 2y is 5y. Now, it can be tempting to try and add these together, but these are unlike terms. They're not like terms, so we can't add them together. You can multiply them, so if we times them together, it would be 100xy, but when we add them, we can't add them. That is our answer. In the place I'd start with this question, since we're going to be asked for the median anyway, is just to put these in order of sides, and that will help us work out the mode and range. You don't have to do it, it's just it's much easier to spot. So the smallest number is 38. Uh, is there another 38? No, the next number is 39. I think there's a few 39s. Okay, the next number is 41. I'm crossing them out as I go so I don't count them twice accidentally. So 42. 43, 44. Now the mode means most. Okay, if you just remember that, mode most is pretty much the same word. So what came up the most? Well, if you have a look, there are three 39s there, and there's two 42s, two 41s. So 39 came up the most. And it's much easier to spot when they're all lined up. The range is the biggest take away smallest and again this is a lot easier when they're all lined up 
So it's 44, which is the biggest, take away the smallest, which is 38. Now, I know that you can do this in your head, but use your calculator anyway, why not? Um, because this is a calculator question, but we know the answer is going to be 6. Okay, so the median. Now the median is the one that you've got to find the middle one. So it's the middle when in order. And I put that in capitals because most people forget that one who get this question wrong. You have to put them in order of size first, okay? And what you do is you cross out one from both sides, then another one from both sides, then another one from both sides, then another, until you're left with one or two in the middle. Now if you're left with two in the middle, then you add them together and halve it. Or find the number that's halfway between the two. Now if they're both 41, the median will be 41. If you think about it, 41 times 2 is 82, and then halve it, it's going to be 41. Now the mean is, a lot of people call it the mean one. You add them all together, and divide it by how many? So I'm going to do this in my calculator. I'm going to do 38 plus 39 plus 39 plus 39 plus 41 plus 41 plus 42 plus 42 plus 43 plus 44. Hopefully I've got the right answer of 408. Over how many there are? Well there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I need to divide that by 10, and I get 40.8 for the mean. Now, it, I would always double check that, so I'm going to do it again on my calculator, because when you're typing a whole load of numbers, it's always easy to make a mistake, but it's very rare to make the same mistake twice, and it's come up with 408 again, so I know it's probably right. Okay, so we're asked to round to three significant figures. So what I'd try and do first is write the number down. Now, with significant figures, we start counting at the start of the number. We don't start counting at the decimal point. So I'm going to start counting here. And I'm going to count one, two, three, and I'm going to draw a line down. Now, all the numbers to the right of that line are going to reset to zero. But before they do, we need to look at this number, and this is called our decider number. If that number that I've circled in blue is 5 or more, it means the 7 goes up to 8. If it's less than 5, the 7 stays the same. Now, because it is 5, that 7 will go to an 8. Now, be careful here. The numbers to the right don't disappear, and some students, when they've done decimal places, um, they think they just go away. With significant figures, you have to remember that they turn to zero. Now they do the same with decimal places, it's just because they're after the decimal point, we don't need them anymore. But these three zeros here are what we call placeholders. So, for instance, if you're asked to estimate the size of a crowd, and there was 207, uh, sorry, 207,518 people, you wouldn't say that that was roughly 208 people. You would say that's roughly 208,000 people. All right, so we're asked to find 8.9% of 457. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to convert 8.9% into a decimal. So this is it as a percentage, and as a decimal, I'm just going to divide it by 100. And you always do that to percentages to find decimals. So 8.9 divided by 100 and that gives me 0 0.089 and all I need to do is get my quantity and times it by that decimal so I'm going to times that by 457 equals and it says 40.673 and it wants it to two decimal places so that's going to be 40.67 when solving Always just write out the question and put down lines either side of the equals. And what we're looking at doing is doing something to both sides so that we get x in its own. So we want to end up with x equals at the bottom. That's when we know we've solved it. So looking at 
the left hand side we need to get rid of this six here and the takeaway six there now we must remove the plus or the minus first as long as it's not trapped in a bracket or a fraction so we're going to get rid of the minus six to do that we need to do the opposite of it so we need to add six to both sides so we're going to end up with 6x on the left hand side because we've got rid of the minus 6 and we're going to add 6 to that to make 60. Now we want to get rid of the 6 before the x. Now that's a times 6. When you put a number next to a letter it's a times. So to get rid of it we need to divide 6. So we're going to end up with x on the left hand side and 60 divided by 6 is 10. So the answer is x equals 10 need that much room in the end and that's it. It's important that we're comfortable with converting between ratios and fractions so having a look at this question there's red on the first one is 8 and blue is 17 so for every 8 red there are 17 blue and it's asked us for the fraction that are blue so there are 17 blue so 17 goes at the top of the fraction, but how many are there all together? And so it's tempting to put 17 over 8, but it's all together. The bottom of a fraction is the total. So we need to do 8 plus 17, which is 25. So the fraction is going to be 17 over 25. Okay, the next one asks us to work the other way. So we've got green to black counters and there's that fraction that are black so there's a couple of ways of doing this um, I could write down um, them as fractions actually so why don't I try that so we know that there are four sevenths that are black and we know that there are only green and black so there must be three sevenths that are green because it has to add up to 7 over 7 which is 1. So looking at that what we can do to both sides and I can put little lines down here I can times both sides by 7 to simplify the fraction uh, to simplify the ratio even. So when I times the left by 7 I get 3 and when I times the right by 7 I get 4. So the ratio of green to black and be careful that you have it in this, the same order so we need to have green then black is 3 to 4 and make sure that it's in simplest form which it is. Okay so we're asked to find the length marked x so it's a trapezium so it has uh, one pair of parallel sides and to work out what the area is we add together both the bases which are the two parallel sides we halve it and then we times that by the height. Now the height is the thing that connects both the bases at right angles. So I'm going to write all that down. So we're going to do half of x plus 1.7. We're going to times it by the height which is 2.7. That will give us the area. Now we're told what the area is. It says the area is 4.05. So this becomes a solving question. So I'm going to put my lines down on the equals. Um, now on the left hand side, uh, let's have a think what I can do. Well, I can expand that bracket, so it becomes half x plus, and I can use my calculator here, I should be able to probably do it in my head, uh, 0.85, and we have times that by 2.7. So we're going to expand it again by timesing both of them by 2.7, so 0.5 times 2.7 is 1.35 x plus 0.85 times 2.7 which is 2.295 and we should put the equals in here because I've not done anything to the right hand side yet so I'm going to take away the 2.295 from both sides to get the x on its own so 4.05 take away 2.295 and it gives me 1.755 to extend my lines a little bit and we divide by the 1.35 to get x on its own so 
So uh, divide by 1.35 and it gives me the answer of 1.3. Now there's different ways of doing that. I could have divided both sides by 2.7 and then times both sides by 2 at the start and that would have also worked and then taken away the 1.7 probably would have been easier uh, but I thought this was might have been easier to show but it's up to you as long as you get the answer 1.3 now I can check that uh, so I'm going to do 0.5 times brackets 1.3 plus 1.7 close brackets times 2.7 and it gives me the answer of 4.05 so I know it's correct so we're given quite a basic diagram, we're given a pair of parallel lines and we're given two angles from them. And angles on the parallel lines, there are four um, things you should be thinking about. So the first one is corresponding, those are F angles. The next one is alternate, which are Z angles. The next one has loads of names, it's co-interior, interior, allied, whichever your teacher says. And the last one is vertically opposite. Now, vertically opposite occur in other places as well, not just parallel lines, but that's normally the one that you will be using. So let's have a look. Well, what letter does that make? So if I draw out from the parallel lines, I always say it's the armpits of the letter. So if it's a Z, it's the armpits of the Z. And if it's an F, it's the armpits of the F. Well, this is like an upside down backwards F. So we know that upside down backwards F, any F angles are going to be the same. So I know that's 62 degrees. Now we've got to give a reason. So the reason is corresponding. Now I always got corresponding and alternate mixed up. So I, I don't know whether this will help you, but I always think cor F ponding and alternate. Please don't spell it that way, but I just literally bung the letter into the word and I've never got them muddled up since. So that might help you. The other one, the C angle, um, are not equal. So these ones here are not equal. Um, they add up to 180 degrees. Um, so just be careful with that. The rule of thumb is if you're guessing and they look the same, even if it says it's not drawn to scale, if they look the same, then if you have no other memory of what they're likely to be, if you forget about angles on parallel lines, just write down the same angle. If the one's acute and one's obtuse, just take it away from 180 degrees and maybe you'll get some marks. But hopefully you'll remember the uh, corresponding alternate uh, co-interior or interior allied and vertically opposite. Okay, so there are quite a few different ways of doing this question. Uh, one way I'm going to show you now, the fact that one pound equals, not very good at drawing euros, 2.23 euros, and we need to get um, it equal to 2,676. And so we've got to work out how do you get from here to here. Now, the way of doing that is 2676 divided by 2.23, and all on the calculator. So we know we've got to times that by 1200, which is what the calculator has told me when I did 2676 divided by 2.23. Now I can check that by typing 2.23 times 1200, and it gives me 2676. So if that works that side, it has to be able to work this side as well. So I'm going to times this side by 1,200, which is quite obvious. 1 times 1,200 is going to be 1,200. And that's going to be my answer, 1,200. Now, there's different ways of doing it, different ways of thinking about it. What you can think about is to get from pounds to euros, we times by 2.23. So therefore, to go the other way, we're going to divide by 2.23. And so you just do 2,676 divided by 2.23. There's loads of different other ways of doing it. You can do it with ratios as well. Okay, so we're asked to find the midpoint, which is just kind of the halfway point. And we're given two coordinates at the start and end of the line segment. And a really easy way of doing this is you're just finding out the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. 
So to find an average, we're going to do the x coordinates first. You add together the two uh, coordinates, the two x coordinates, and divide by two because there's two numbers. So two plus minus one, well, two take away one because the minus will win against plus and a minus. So two take away one is one, and divide by two is just going to be 0 0.5 or just a half. The y's, so here we've got minus five plus two over two. Minus five plus two is minus three over two, which is going to be minus 1.5. So the coordinates are 0 0.5 minus 1.5. And if you think about it, minus, uh, half is halfway between 2 and minus 1, so that makes sense. And minus 1 and half is halfway between minus 5 and 2. Okay, so we're given a regular polygon, so that's going to be quite an important word there. Regular means that all of the sides, angles, and exterior angles in this polygon are exactly the same. So if I added another one here, this would also be x. If I put another exterior angle here, all the way around this, they're all x. They're all the same, and there's 16 of them in total. Now the one thing we know about exterior angles is they always add up to 360. So to find out what that angle is, we just get 360 and we divide it by 16 because there's 16 identical exterior angles. So I get my calculator out, 360 divided by 16 equals, and it's 22.5. So we can check that, we can do 22.5 times 16 and it has to add up to 360, which it does. So this question says there's a tennis tournament uh, being played where each player plays each other once. And there's multiple ways of doing this. One of the ways is listing out all the different combinations. But this question only asks for how many tennis matches are being played. So you don't need to list them out. And sometimes you will need to list them out. This one you don't. So let's start off with a liar. A liar has four people that they're going to play against. William. So, William, Paul, Samantha, and Christine. William, well, we've already counted Elias' match with William, so William only has three left that he can play. Then Paul has already, we've already counted his match with the other two, so he's only going to play Samantha and Christine, other than his matches we've already counted. Samantha, well, Samantha's only got Christine left to play, after we uh, counted all the other matches. And Christine, well, Christine's matches have already been counted so far. So, we've got the four matches Elias going to play, three matches that William's going to play, not counting the one we've already counted from Elias, plus the two Paul's going to play, plus the other one that Samantha's going to play. So, four plus three is seven, plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So in total, there are 10 different matches going to be played. Okay, factorise means put it into brackets. So looking at the first one, um, there's a T I can divide out of both of them. So I put T on the outside of the bracket, but there's no number because 7 and 5 um, don't have anything that goes into both of them. So I think, what do I times t by to get to 7t squared? Well, it's going to be 7t. And what do I times t by to get to 5t? Well, it's just going to be 5. You can check your answer by expanding the bracket. Check you, it makes 7t squared plus 5t, which it does. Next one, um, w is only in the first term, so I can't divide out the w. But there's a number I can divide out of both of those. Now, I could pick 2, but actually 4 is a better number because it says factorise fully which means I need to take out or divide out the 4 rather than just the 2. So 4 on the outside. What do I times 4 by to get to 12w or 3w? And what do I times 4 by to get to minus 8? It's going to be minus 2. And again, I can expand that to check it. Right, the last one, there's a number and a letter. So I'm thinking the number of 16 and 24 would be 8, and the letter would be A. Okay, so there's two things that we're dividing out this time. So I'm going to have 8a on the outside. So I think figure out what do I times 8 by to get to 24? Well, that's 3. 
and what do I times a by to get to a squared? Well, that's going to be a. What do I times a by to get to 16? 2. And what do I times, uh, well, 2 by to get to 16a? So it's just going to leave it because the a will is on the outside of the bracket. So a to a times 2 is 16a, so I don't need an a there. So for this question, we just need to remember the area of a circle. Now, the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. Now, that's the area for a full circle, my dodgy circle there. But we only have a quarter of it. Now, if you have a look, that length there, the 22 centimeters, is going to be the radius of a full circle, if I drew the circle properly. So we know what the radius is. And what we all we do is we times it by the fraction of the circle we have, which is going to be a quarter. So it's going to be pi times r, which is 22 squared, times a quarter. So I'm going to do that on my calculator. Pi times 22 squared. And then you can press equals and then just divide it by 4. That's the same as timesing it by a quarter. And the answer I get is 380 point one three two seven blah 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 and so to two decimal places that's going to be three hundred and eighty point one three okay so we're asked to draw uh, to write 88 as a product of its prime factors so the first thing to do is write 88 and then we have two shoots coming from it now I need to uh, find out which two numbers times to go to make 88 now a little tip if you've got an even number always pick two so 2 times 44. And whenever we get to a uh, prime number, we always circle it because that's finished. So 44, we can get another 2 out of that. We'll divide another 2 out of that. So 2 and 22, 2 and 11. Now 11 is also a prime number. And when you're left with just prime numbers, then you write your answer out like this. Now, if you're also asked to write it in index form, that means instead of 2 times 2 times 2, you're going to write 2 to the power of 3 times 11. Now, don't work that out because that will give you 88. So 2 cubed times 11 is 88. For this question, the main thing we need to remember is the triangle. Now, the triangle is like the speed distance time triangle, but obviously this has nothing to do with speed distance time. The formula says that pressure equals force over area. So as long as you've got force on the top, which is measured in newtons, then you're fine because area and pressure can be the other way around. So if we're asked to find the pressure. So we cover up pressure on the triangle. So we cover that up and it says that it's force divided by area. And it says that the force is 2280 newtons and the area is 38. So we get our calculator out 2280 divided by 38 and I get the answer of 60. Now, the units, because uh, force is in newtons and because area is either in meters squared or centimeter squared normally, then the units are newtons per centimeter squared. So it's 60 newtons per centimetre squared. Don't forget, it could be metres squared, newtons per metre squared, and that's absolutely fine for pressure. These questions are just based on a few rules of indices. The first rule says that if you've got two powers with the same base, which these two do, because they're both A, you add the powers. Now, if you think about it, A squared is A times A, a to the power of 6 is a times a times a times a times a times a. So in total, we're timesing a by itself 8 times. So it's eight, a to the power of 8. The next rule says if you've got a power inside the bracket and outside the bracket, you times them together. So it's m to the power of 3 times 6, which is m to the power of 18. Now this last one's a little bit more complicated and I'm going to write it out so I've got a bit of a larger one to play with. Okay, first thing I focus on is the number. Now 55 over 11, 
so I know that 55 divided by 11 is going to be 5. 55 divided by 11, that's all we've got to do. And the reason we can do that is there's only one term at the top and one term at the bottom. A term is defined by you know whether there's a plus or a minus, and there's no pluses or minuses here. Okay, so the next one, we've got the R's that we want to divide. So we've got R at the top and an R at the bottom. Now, this R at the top is technically R to the power of 1. Now, when we do R to the power of 1 divided by R to the power of, power of 8, which I'm going to write out down here so I can show you, you take away the powers. So when you times them, you add the powers. When you divide, you take away the powers. So that's R to the power of minus 7. Okay, now we're left with the S's. And it's the same thing with the S's. This time we're doing S to the power of 15 divided by S to the power of 8. So it's going to be S to the power of 15 take away 8, which is 7. So my answer would be 5, R to the power of minus 7, S to the power of 7. When you're asked to do a plan or a front or side elevation, it's important to remember that the diagram you're going to be drawing must be absolutely square on. So there's not going to be any 3D lines at all. It's just going to be 2D shapes like rectangles. Sometimes you have triangles. Occasionally you might get a circle or a semicircle. So let's have a think. What does plan mean? Plan means view from the top. So what of this shape are we going to see from the top? Well, we're definitely going to see this one. But we'll also see this one as well. Now, we've got to work out what the sizes of them are going to be. Well, the top one's easy. It's just 7 centimeters by 6 centimeters. Now, I'm not going to be able to draw this accurately because I don't have a ruler. But we can almost get it right and get it kind of right. And if I label it, that's going to be 7 centimeters and that should be 6 centimeters. And in your exam, just make sure you actually measure them because they are said to you in here and it does say accurately construct so you want to make sure that it's done seven centimeters and six centimeters now the difficulty is going to be the last bit well we know it's going to be six across because it's the same as this one here but what's the width going to be what's this one going to be here well if this one here is seven and this one here is nine what's left over well, there's two centimeters left over, so it's going to be two centimeters in width. Ooh. Let's use this one, right? So it's going to be two centimeters in width. So two centimeters there, and this one obviously is going to be six centimeters, the same as the right hand one. Now, this line we have in the middle, this line here, is really important because that shows that there's a join, that there's there's something happening there. So you need to construct, you need to show that, especially if there's a change in elevation, just show it with a line on the diagram. Okay, so the first thing to do with this question is realize that x is sandwiched between minus 12 and minus 5. And all we need to do now is figure out what the sign's going to be. So x is going to be greater than minus 12, but it's also going to be equal to minus 12 because this dot here is filled in. x is smaller than minus 5, but it can't equal minus 5 because this dot here is hollow. Okay, so whenever we're asked to estimate with a scatter graph, we're always going to start off by drawing a line of best fit. So I'm going to draw my line of best fit. And yours might be different to mine, and that's absolutely fine. Now, it's asking us to estimate the height, and it's giving us the width. And that's really important, because the width is up the side. So a common mistake would be to read 17 from the bottom, but the height is at the bottom. So we've got to check the scale first, and it seems like it's going up in twos. So let's just check that. Yep, it's going up in twos. So what I want to do is draw a line across at the width of 17, which will be roughly here. I'm going to stop when it hits the line of best fit, and I'm going to draw a line down, and I'm going to read off what that is. Well, this scale is also going up in twos, I think. Yep, it is. 
So the uh, estimate of the height would be four centimeters. Okay, so this is quite a tricky question because it mixes fractions and ratios together, but we've got to be comfortable with that. So I'd first of all, just show the information so that I can get my head around it. So we've got Denver, who as a fraction has three nineteenths of the food. And so that leaves how much? Well, we've got a calculator, so we could just do one take away three over 19 on the calculator, but we know that that's going to be 16 over 19. So we can kind of ignore Denver now because we used Denver's amount or fraction of the food to work out Engels and Fido's combined. So that's how much food they'll get, but they're sharing it in the ratio of 5 to 2. So in total, the amount of parts they have is 5 plus 2, which is 7. So there's 7 parts all together. Okay. And each part, so one part is going to be worth, well, as a fraction, it's 16 over 19 divided by 7. So 16 over 19 on the calculator divided by 7, which gives us 16 over 133. So that's the fraction of each part. Now it says, um, show uh, what is Fido's share. So we're looking for Fido's share. Now, Fido gets two lots of that. So looking for Fido, he gets two lots of that fraction. So I'm going to times that by two on the calculator, which is 32 over 133. Now it does say show your answer as a percentage rounded to the nearest percent. So to work um, between uh, fractions and, and uh, percentages, I just need to times by 100. So what I can do is just times that by 100. I'll do it on calculator, times by 100. And press S to D if it comes up as a fraction. And it says 24.060 blah, blah, blah. So to the nearest percent, um, Fido gets 24%. Okay, I understand the temptation in this question to say that the answer is zero. Please do not write that. Anything to the power of zero is not zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. Now you can think about this if you do x to the power of five divided by x to the power of five then um, the rule is that you take away the indices when you divide them, so it's x to the power of 0. And we know that any number divided by itself is always equal to 1. So the answer to this question is always going to be 1. Just try and remember that. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. OK, so question A is about reverse percentages. So in 2014 and 2015, well, let's have a look. So the sales went down between the two. So if we start off with 100% and they went down 12%, what we left with? Well, we left with 88%. Now, as a multiplier, and this is the best way of doing this, 88% divided by 100, make it a decimal, is 0.88. Now that number, 0.88, is what we times the 2014 um, sales to get 2015. But in this question, we're given the 2015 sales. So we're given this one here. So we want to work backwards. So what we want to do is we want to do, I'll get my calculator, 7,359 divided by 0.88. And that gives me... Uh, eight thousand three hundred and sixty two pound fifty you've got to ask yourself well is that reasonable well they went down by twelve percent so it's natural that they would go from a number around just over eight thousand to a number that's just over seven thousand so i'm going to write the answer eight three six two pound fifty okay and the next question says that the sales went up in 2016 or they want to get they have a target to get their sales up in 2016 what's the percentage increase now percentage increase or percentage decrease it's the same formula is change over original t 
times 100. So the change, well, that's going to be 12272. Take away the 2015 sales. So that's that one there. 7359. So they're looking for it to change by 4913, 4913. The original was at 7359, and we need to times by 100. So I'm going to divide that by 7359, times it by 100. And that gives me 66.7617, blah, blah, blah. It says to the nearest percent, so that's going to be 67%. Now I'm going to be using the multiply method for this question. If you've got a, a different method that works really well, then stick with it. But you do need to know the multiply method for the GCSE. Now the word that probably tricks most people is this one here. Depreciates means goes down. Okay, It means it loses value. So it goes down by 1.7% each year. So to work out multiplier, you first of all start off with 100%. Now this time you take away 1.7%, okay, because it's going down by 1.7%. And you can do that on your calculator or in your head. So 100 take away 1.7 is 98.3%. Then you want to work it out as a multiplier. So you're going to do 98.3% and you just divide it by 100. And multiply is a posh way of saying decimal. So 0.983. Now, any time I time something by 0.983, it will decrease it by 1.7%. So, we've got a car we bought in 1980, and what is it worth in 1985? So, that is five years. So, it's going to depreciate by 1.7% uh, every year. So, we've got the 2,245. And if we times it by 0 0.983 once, that's one year. But we need to times it by that amount five times. And instead of writing that times 9, uh, 0 0.983 times 0 0.983 times 0 0.983 five times, I can just do it to the power of five. You get the same answer. So in the exam, you can just write times 0 0.983 five times. And that's absolutely fine. You get the same answer. So... 2245 on the calculator times 0.983 to the power of 5 and I get the answer of 2060.5536687 blah 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 okay so because it's money it's going to be two decimal places so that's going to be 55 five. now last thing is just to check your answer makes sense well the car was worth 2245 It has depreciated, but not by very much. 1.7% is not very much. So it's gone down, and it's lost about, say, roughly £200. So the answer makes sense. OK, for Venn diagrams, it's really important to understand the notation. This symbol here means union. It just means or. It means it can be in A, or it can be in B, or it can be in both. So it's any number inside either circle. So I could have 9, 5, 3, 7, 18, or 2. Let's go for 9. But the other 5 would be correct. This symbol here, I always view it as an AND. I always put a little line there to say A for AND. And it means it needs to be in A and B. It can't just be in A, it can't just be in B. It needs to be in both. And there's two numbers that uh, fit that bill, 3 and 7. So I could write 3 or I could write 7. Now this little symbol here, okay, and it's an A with a dash. That dash there means not. So we're looking for numbers that aren't in A and are in B. Well, let's have a look at where not A is. Well, it's anywhere around here. Anywhere around here is not in A. And let's have a look at where B is. So B is anywhere here. 
So the numbers that overlap both of those are the 18 and the 2. So it's 18 and 2. So there are two numbers that fit that bill. So that will go at the top of our fraction. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in total. Now I can simplify that a little bit to make it a quarter. And so my answer to that will be 1 over 4 or a quarter. OK, so we've got quite a lot going on with this question. Um, we've got three planks of wood attached by glues and nails, or glue and nails, um, so we don't need to worry about the joins. Um, but we're looking at the three planks of wood. Now, we've got two of the lengths. Um, one is um, six metres and the other is eight metres. But we need to find, obviously, the third length here um, to be able to continue with this question. So given the fact it's a right angle triangle uh, and we know two of the length and we're finding a third length, it's going to be Pythagoras. And Pythagoras says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now c is the one that has to be the hypotenuse, and to find the hypotenuse we just go opposite the right angle. So we're finding c. a and b don't matter which way around we do it, so I'm going to do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. And I can put my lines down, uh, as I normally do. So I always put the lines down that e equals. I've just missed that one. So uh, 6 squared is 36, um, 8 squared is 64, which equals c squared. 36 plus 64 is 100, equals c squared. All I'm going to do is just square root both sides, so c will equal 10. Now, um, when you square root, you get a negative um, as well, but um, since it's a length, it can't be negative, so it's just going to be 10. So c is 10, so we know that that's going to be 10 metres. And it says it takes 90 millilitres of paint per metre of wood um, to cover it. So what we're going to have to do is work out how much wood we have. Um, so I'm going to say this examiner wood length or something. Always try and describe to the examiner what you're doing. So we're going to do 6 plus 8 plus 10. So 6 plus 8 is 14 plus 10 is 24. Okay. And then to work out the amount of paint required, so paint required. Um, I need to do 24, because we've got 24 metres of paint, times 90, because it's 90 millilitres per metre. So we can do this with the um, grid or column uh, method. doesn't really matter which one. I'll do the column, why not? So uh, 0 for the first one. And then we're going to do 90 times 4, so we need to add a 0. 9 times 4 is 36. 9 times 2 is 18, plus the 3 is 21. Um, and what we could have done is 9 times 24 and just added a 0 onto the end of it. There's loads of different ways of doing these things. So it would be um, 2,160 millilitres. If you ask this in litres, in litres it would be 2.160 litres. Um, because there's a thousand millilitres in a litre. OK, so we have a set of simultaneous equations and I'm just going to start off by just writing them out to give myself a bit more room because it's a little bit too small otherwise. So I'm just copying out the question. Now, um, there's a list of things we need to do for these and there are different methods. I'm just going to go through the main one. Um, the first thing is uh, I need to get uh, either the x's or the y's the same uh, coefficient. So the number before them needs to be the same, ignoring signs. Uh, now looking at this, um, and I'm going to label these a and b. Looking at this, if I double a, then the x's would become the same because they both have a coefficient of 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to write 2a. So I'm going to double everything in a. So double the 2x to make 4x to make the x's the same. Double the 5 before the y, so that's 10y now. And double the 24 to make 48. Um, now, next, I need to um, probably, and it's, it's normally the case, if I write down b again, it just makes things easier. So I'm just going to literally copy down b underneath. OK, so next I'm going to remind myself that I'm working downwards now. So I just put little circles around these to remind me I'm going downwards. And I need to look at the sign before the um, letter that I've uh, made the same coefficient. So I'm looking at the x's and I'm looking at the signs before them. 
if the signs are the same we are going to subtract if the signs are different we're going to add and it's that simple okay now the signs are the same because they're both positive so we are going to be subtracting so a minus there a minus there and a minus there okay let's start 4x take away 4x is nothing which is good because it needs to be nothing 10y minus minus 3y now two minuses make a plus so that's 10y plus 3y which would be 13y and we've got 48 plus because the two minuses make a plus plus 4 which is going to be uh, 52 I'm going to put my lines in Okay, next I need to do 52 divided by 13. Uh, and we're going to do both of these divided by 13. So we've got y equals, I think it's 4. So 4 times 13 is 52. So yeah, y equals 4. Then I'm going to pick one of the equations from the question and I'm going to substitute the 4 in. I'm just going to pick the top one. So 2x plus 5 times 4, because we know that y is 4, equals 24 and again put my lines in so it's 2x plus 20 equals 24 take away 20 from both sides 2x equals 4 divide both sides by 2 extend my lines a little bit and x equals 2 now if you've got time in the exam you can check that that's right by using the second equation so 4 times 2 is 8 uh, 3 times 4 is 12, and 8 take away 12 is minus 4, so we know it's correct. So x is 2 and y is 4. Well, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please click like. If you want to see more from us, including the other two papers, please click subscribe. We've got loads and loads of stuff on the website on maths.com, which you can go to here, uh, which is completely free. But if you feel you're quite far behind in the maths, or if you're not happy with the grades you're getting on onmaths.com, or other mock papers you have, you can try out our premium service, which is mathseffect.co.uk. With mathseffect.co.uk, it's a small monthly fee, uh, and you can do an annual subscription, but if you only want to do it up until November, which makes sense, you can just pay per month. And what it does is it has the whole of the maths GCSE as a journey and you go through each topic mastering it one topic at a time. A lot of the students I talk to say I really don't know where to start like I keep doing Pythagoras and trigonometry over and over again um, and I don't really know what else I don't know. This is a service which just covers everything. It makes sure you master and you are an expert in every topic in maths. So it's worth checking out. Loads of people have joined already and if you haven't joined Go to the website mathseffect.co.uk or click the link in the description that will take you straight there and you can check it out. Otherwise, thank you very much. If you want to leave a comment down below of anything you want us to cover, because we're desperate to help anyone who's being caught up in this terrible situation, uh, which is not ideal for anyone, but equally, like we all understand why it's happened, but if I was having to reset or having to sit for the first time, uh, in November I would feel exactly the same as you are probably feeling so if you want to leave any comments down below and we might um, release some videos just discussing um, you know options that you have open or, or whatever it might be otherwise thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video